Good morning, YouTube family. Good morning, Instagram family. This is Randy. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Christ on the Coast. This is a channel that's dedicated to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I love him with all my heart and soul. And I like to tell stories and then uh, talk to you about Jesus a bit, preach the gospel. And um, uh, exciting week this week. Big, a uh, lot of things happening. This is the week after Easter. Uh, Jesus Christ is risen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. And um, we're having our house uh, refreshed. We're refreshing and starting anew. Uh, and maybe that's what I'll title this today. I write these scripts as I come down to uh, Sunset Beach, which is where I film most of these uh, videos. Um, and uh, I love Sunset Beach. It's just, it's beautiful. And uh, yeah, refresh and start anew. Um, we're, uh, we have these contractors that uh, my buddy Leo, who you've seen in past videos, who's in my Bible study, they have a contractor doing their kitchen. And, and Debbie and I were, um, we were thinking about doing a little refresh of our kitchen and living room and hallway. And so we hired these guys and they are so good and they are so efficient. And so Debbie and I um, went on vacation this week up north again to Cambria and to um, Shell Beach. And while we were gone, uh, these guys got started on and we came home yesterday afternoon and oh my gosh, there's plastic all over the place. And we are trapped in, in rooms and we had to kind of slit some holes to get into different rooms. But boy, have they already done a number on our house with new countertops and stuff like that. So that's pretty fun. Um, it's amazing when you get just the skill that uh, that God creates people with these different professions. And uh, this is a family owned business. And the names of the guys are Foddy, Shoddy and Henry. And they are so, and their crew, they are so good. And so um, we are just stoked about that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, because of this, uh, by the way, I'm not in the Doka, Andy Stewart, this is for you, buddy. I'm not in the Doka Double Cab studio this morning. I am in the Honda Civic because believe it or not, I'm thinking about selling the Doka Double Cab studio. Um, yes, I am. I've had it for 13 years. <clears throat> it's been great. I don't get attached to cars. Well, I'm kind of attached to that car, but um, I think I'm going to sell it. And I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I am going to sell it. But anyway, so Andy, I'm in the Civic Studio, the 2015 Civic Studio with 32,000 miles on it. Black on black. Beautiful car. Love this car. Um, so uh, I, I was just thinking about, we had a couple of exciting things happen on our trip in uh, exciting in the sense of uh, um, two completely different situations. A very dear friend of mine is going through a crisis and then a brother-in-law of mine is going through a crisis and they reached out to both Debbie and I, uh, which was really an honor. And so we were able to, uh, during this trip, um, stay in touch with both of them and um, uh, let God kind of guide us in um, wise counsel. And um, and it just made me think about the fact that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are hurting. There's a lot of people that are um, just uh, confused about life. Uh, things are happening to them. And so I thought I'd start off uh, with a, something that I wrote in the, in, in the uh, margins of my Bible. This is from Pastor Greg Laurie. And I, I just think it's just such a wonderful kind of reminder for me about worrying. And it says, when we worry, uh, what what happens is our hopes pull us in one direction while our fears pull us in another. When you worry about the future, you cripple yourself in the present. Worrying does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It em empties today of its strength. And that is just so, that is so important to remember that because so many of us, we live in the past and that, that leads to depression some of us live in the future and that makes us anxious. And so the ideal place to be is be aware of the past, be aware of the future, but don't live in those two places, but try to stay in the present and the here and now. And as a Christian, that's where God comes in and helps us to do that. And so we're going to take a little walk on the beach and um, kind of discuss it a little bit. And here we go, exiting the 2015 Honda Civic uh, 
32, 24,000. I forget how many miles are on this thing. Anyway, we're going to take a walk on the beach right now. Here we go. Ah, oh, let me know when I'm funny, guys. All right. Okay, we are coming right on to 26th Street. Yeah, 26th Street. I like 26th Street. I like all streets. I like life. Anyway, good morning, you guys. And, and, so, um, while we were on our trip, um, you know, like I was saying, that we have, uh, we had a couple situations with two different people. One, a very close friend of mine, and the other, uh, my brother-in-law, in which they were um, uh, in need of, they were just in need of, of help. And, uh, and, it, and again, Debbie and I, we, we always have our, as Christians, we have the power of the Holy Spirit that uh, lives inside us, it dwells inside of us, and it prompts, he prompts us to, uh, to take action. We don't always take action, but when we do, um, there's some amazing things that happen. Not only are we, do we speak truth to other people's lives and pour into them, but uh, it also blesses us. So the blessings that we miss out on for ourselves um, are, it, it's, that's, <laughs> that's something that um, <clears throat> uh, will not happen to us unless we take advantage of God's prompting for us to, to help people. And so, um, so anyway, it, it, the, the, the worrying part, both in these situations, uh, are two completely different crises, but they speak to um, the importance of paying attention to the, the people around us. Um, and so often we get into our own little world, beautiful ocean this morning, um, we get in our own little world where we don't we don't pay attention to others. We kind of pay attention to ourselves, which is very important uh, as well. Just like when you're in an airplane, they say, put your mask on first before you help others. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a balance in which God will direct us and help us in our life in which he wants us to care for ourselves, but he wants us to pour the blessing out on others that he's given us. And that blessing that he's given Debbie and myself is the salvation of Jesus Christ. And because he has done something so remarkable for both of us and for all Christians that believe in him, um, our allegiance is to him and him alone. And he directs us into all truth. Uh, the Bible says that, that you know all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So Jesus took the debt that we owe. He took the sin of the world upon himself, which is, which is something that's rampant in our culture right now. And when we, when we look at the historical fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross, those nails that held him to the cross, you know, those are the nails that, that, that really should be for us. And yet, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So he went and took the debt in our place. That is a bizarre, um, amazing, spiritual miracle that no other, no other kind of uh, religion or faith uh, you, you know, um, has that power. And that's why being a Christian is not a religion. It's a relationship with the living God. And because all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is a free gift that's given by his grace. It's by grace that we're saved, not by works so that no man can boast. So we can't earn it, we, can't, we don't deserve it. That's what grace is. Grace, an acronym for grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. And when God comes into somebody's life, when Jesus Christ saves an individual, and when we repent and trust in him as we would a parachute jumping out of a, you know, a, a plane 10,000 feet up in the air, then a remarkable thing happens. Not only does our life change because the power of the Holy Spirit is deposited as a seal of our salvation, but he directs us into all truth and he helps us with changing our lives. 
it's not it's not just a, a prayer that I say, oh, I'm sorry, Lord, come into my life, and that's it. There's there's a there's something deeper than that. When we really have a need to to to, to look towards God in a way that we never have before, where we know that we need a Savior, and and we're contrite in spirit, and we and we say, Lord. I repent of my sin, I know I'm a sinner, I need you, then God will save you. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So you guys, this morning on this beautiful overcast spring day down here in Sunset Set Beach, I just, um, I just wanna tell you that Jesus Christ is real, he's alive, he wants a relationship with you, and when you put your faith and trust in him, he will change your eternal destination from going to hell to going to heaven. That's the amazing thing about it. And it's a supernatural thing that you can't explain to anybody unless it happens to them. Uh, you know, Debbie and I talk about it all the time that, you know, before we accepted Jesus Christ in our lives, you know, we, we had good lives, we, you know, but we were, we were really dead in our sin. And when God opened our eyes to the reality that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through him, it completely changed our lives. And so now our allegiance is to him and him alone. And he, through the power of the Holy Spirit, directs us into the, to the truth of helping others more. Just as we did this week, where we, we poured truth and love and encouragement to both these parties that I was talking about. And that was that's just a daily occurrence that sometimes happens with Christians. And so you guys, I just, I know that, you know, a lot of you out there are lost. I know a lot of you are maybe not lost, but you do have, you know, Jesus Christ in the center of your life. And speaking to those people first, those people that, that know Jesus, continue to pray for others, you guys. Continue to pray for the lost. Continue to pray for your enemies. There, there's so much, you know, there's so much, uh, you know, horrible stuff on the TV, Red, but we should pray for our enemies. Jesus says that. And we should also do action steps to help others. Not just say it, but actually do things. And for those of you that don't know Jesus yet, it is simple, but it's 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 one of those things where you, you still, first of all, have to um, you know, go against your pride and understand that you need a savior. And the minute you do that and you repent and turn from your sin and trust in Jesus alone, then that same born again, supernatural power will be yours as well. And you will have eternal life with Jesus Christ. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, God in three persons, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Until next week, you guys. God bless you.